The Lord be with you. Today we have a couple of things going on. Our baptismal remembrance service. Every quarter, we are going to round up all those people. Actually, they all have letters sent to them telling them that their child had been baptized in this particular quarter of the year, and therefore we have a baptismal remembrance service, and we're going to do that, uh, and you'll see that in the bulletin. You'll also see the list of uh, young people, quite uh, a healthy list. How many of you remember Harry Kirkpatrick? Ah, a number of you. Um, a week ago, Friday, Harry died. I don't know how many had heard that. Harry had moved, he and Nancy moved to Arizona and have been living out there. And for the past couple of years, he has been living with cancer and cancer treatment. So um, his name will appear in our prayers today. And then finally, our gospel lesson. Uh, reminds me of children. I don't know what Jesus is saying to us, but he gives us the parable of an um, owner of a vineyard who, tell, who asks his sons. First one he asks, will you go and work in the vineyard today? And he says, yes, sir. But he doesn't go. And the second son says no, but has a change of heart and goes anyway. And then the question is, which son honored his father? And we'll find out uh, what that means for us and what the answer is. Please rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness as we prepare our hearts for worship. It's found on page three. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways known and unknown that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy. Yet we are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, God, and remember your promise to us for the sake of Jesus Christ grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Through the living word, Jesus Christ, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm going to invite the congregation to be seated and all those who are going to have an anniversary, who are celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, I would like to come forward. Come on. <laughs> and by the way, if you happen to have a baptismal candle, bring it. If you don't, Eric will give you one. You may need help in taking that out of the box, but if you don't. A handsome bunch of people, young and old. And now to the parents. In Christian love, you have presented these children for holy baptism and have made these promises to faithfully bring them to the services of God's house, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Do you renew your commitment to these baptismal promises? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And now to the congregation. Do you promise to support and encourage these parents in the keeping of these sacred promises? If so, answer, we will with God's help. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. We're now going to light those baptismal candles. And it's going to be so much work. I'm going to have Eric help me. You want me to start from the other end? Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And the congregation responds. When you were baptized, the congregation was asked to confess its faith, and we are all going to do that now, a faith that you are all growing to understand. So congregation, please rise. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the for Now, I want the parents 
if you uh, look on the screen, you will see the blessing you are supposed to, to uh, say. And as you say that, you make a sign of the cross on your child's head. All right. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, <coughs> we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially, we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, I wish you could all hold hands, but you're holding candles. So receive this blessing. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may go back to your seats. And when you get there, or even now, you may put out your candles. The Lord be with you. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
first reading is from the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Second read the second chapter of Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work with you, in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you, by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come up. We're going to have fun today. Any of you know a riddle? Well, I do. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> I'm going to ask you a riddle. This one you probably will get. What holds water even though it is full of holes? Michaela. A tank? No. This will be, although a tank does have holes in it. A sponge. If you look at a sponge, it's full of holes, right? But it holds water, doesn't it? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> what, here's another one. What gets wet when it's drying? Michaela. Oh boy, you got it, a towel. As you're drying off, it gets wet. All right. This is another one, listen closely. When I am filled, I can work or play. When I am empty, I do nothing all day. What am I? That's a really tough one. A glove, oh, oh, buckets could be, but a glove. As long as a glove has a hand in it, it's full, it can do all kinds of things. But when it's empty, it can't do anything. So 
so it's a glove. Well, Jesus asked a riddle today. Well, first, the elders and the chief priests of the synagogue asked Jesus a riddle. Well, it was a question. And the question was, by what authority do you do everything you do? He heals. He preaches. And, and we know the answer. But Jesus said, I'll tell you the answer if you can tell me the answer to a riddle, to a question. And, and it was a question that was, he said, John the Baptist, by whose authority did he come? Was it the authority of God or of man? And they went and answered the question. You know why? They were too worried about what people would think. So they couldn't answer the question. Jesus wants us to understand. Uh, by the way, if they would have answered the question correctly and just simply said, God gave John the Baptist the authority, Jesus would have said, that's where I get my authority too, from Almighty God. We can be thankful for that. Jesus' authority comes from Almighty God. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his authority. That is divine. We thank you for his authority in our lives. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You can see from my sermon title, the title of my sermon is Show Me. It comes from that musical, My Fair Lady. And if you remember, Elisa, uh, Elisa Doolittle was uh, being taught English by Professor Higgins. And she was being courted by Freddie Ensford Hill. And she had trouble with both of them because she felt she was being used. So she said these words. Words, words, words. I'm so sick of words. I get words all day through, first from him, now from you. Is that all you blighters can do? Don't talk of stars burning above. If you are in love, show me. Sing me no song, read me no rhyme, don't waste my time, show me. Don't talk of June, don't talk of fall, don't talk at all, show me. She certainly wanted to be shown. If, if she would um, talk about a sermon, she would probably say, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. Fred, uh, Fred Craddock says, uh, Fred Craddock is a retired preaching professor, uh, but he said these words about this parable. The parable says that responses to God are of two kinds, that of the person who has said no, but who repents and whose life says yes and that of the person who says yes, but whose life says no. We've all heard the adage, actions speak stronger than words. I had um, an experience this week, still feel guilty about it. Wednesday, had my Christ Care group, and uh, we ended and we always and early on the fourth Wednesday because I have a board meeting at the Council of Churches at the Ozarks at 11.30. And uh, oh, after Christ Care, we got talking a little bit and I had then seven minutes to get to the Council of Churches. 
which even on a good day, I don't know if you could do it. So I'm leaving the parking lot and I go up here to this road right behind us. I think it's Lindbergh and Dallison and there was a uh, car parked sort of cattywampus in the intersection, uh, not, not on Dallison Street. I thought, oh, that's odd. And as I drove by, didn't see any people. I think the people were inside. But as I got past it, I saw leaning against the back bumper a tire. And I thought, oh, somebody, they, they need someone to put that tire on their car. And I said, I should do it. But I also said, I'm too busy. And I thought, oh, they're probably waiting. They weren't standing by their car trying to flag down help. So I thought, well, maybe they're just waiting for AAA. We'll let them be. Still feel guilty. I should have at least stopped and asked, can I help you? We're supposed to be doers. Well, if you look at this text, in antiquity, there are three versions of this. Right? We talked a little bit about how scripture came together at uh, pub theology this past week. Well, there's three versions of this parable. The first version is what we have by the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It has the first son who says yes, but doesn't do it. And the second son who says no, but goes ahead and does it. And then Jesus' question, which son showed honor to his father? The one, and they all said, well, the one that said no, but did it anyway. And the other version just reverses the order that the first son was the one that said no, second son said yes. The answer to the question is the same. The third version is the one that is favored in the Eastern Church. Those that, whose mindset is more Middle Eastern and whose mindset is more about shame and honor. They live in a sh honor shame society, they call it. And how do you show honor? When somebody asks you to do something, you say yes. Even if you don't intend to do it, you say yes. So when they're asked the question, in their version of this, God, of this parable, when they're asked the question, which one showed honor to their father, they say, the one who said yes and didn't do it. And we go, how can that be? Well, the way I've had it explained to me is it's like going to a restaurant in an honor-shame society, and you're eating your meal, and the waiter comes by, how does everything taste? Do you need anything? I could use some more water. Yes, sir, right away. 20 minutes later, you still don't have water. And you flag down the waiter, and he says, oh, yes, sir, right away, sir. And you finish your stay at the, the restaurant and are going to leave after about an hour. You never did get your water. The whole point is, in an honor-shame society, if the person said no, that would be extremely disrespectful and would, dis, would, would be a, a sign of total disrespect in front of uh, other people. So you are to say yes, even if you can or will not do what they ask. Say yes. So in their version of this parable, when Jesus asks, who did the will? Who, who showed honor to the Father?
open hearts to let God help. Martin Luther said there were seven characters, early in the Reformation, when people were really puzzled, especially the masses of people were puzzled about what was happening with the Reformation. Martin Luther said, there are seven characteristics of a true church, and here is what they are. In fact, he addressed this to the poor, confused persons trying to find the true Christian church in the world. Number one, preaching of the word. Two, baptism. Three, communion. Four, confession and forgiveness. Five, ordaining ministers. So far we're doing pretty well, aren't we? Six, thanksgiving, prayer and praise. Boy, we've got the six of those pretty good. And then he said, Point seven, the most difficult one, is under, understanding the suffering of the cross. As the Apostle Paul put it, have the same mind in you which is yours in Christ Jesus. Suffering, the suffering of the cross, giving of ourselves, serving with God's help. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Fill your church throughout the world with the spirit to work for your pleasure. Lead us in your path and teach us to care for the needs of the poor, the exploited, and the outcast. Hear us, O oh God. Teach us how to value and enjoy the beauty of your creation with humility. Bless the United States and all people. Guide us to, make be to take better care of each other and your entire creation. Hear us, O oh God. Refresh the people of all nations with your compassion and love. 
And the beauty of autumn, the sounds of war are everywhere. Bombs and tears, sirens and fear, guns and terror, evil of every kind. Holy God, help us be a place of peace and hope. We grieve with those in Oklahoma who have gone through the, terror, through the horror of a beheading and a murder and a girls' ball team that was in a deadly accident. Give us the same mind in Christ, living in peace with loving hearts. Hear us, O God. Healing God, send your aid to those who wait for you. Heal their pain, mend their brokenness, giving your healing especially to Alton Burnell, Hal Christensen, Linda Demery, Zach Drake, Wilbert Dykeman, Zamir Godfrey, Bonnie Holcomb, Jim Lampy, Elaine Mitchell, Wayne Myers, Paul Olin, Gina Rutan, Katie Snath, Mary Thomas, and Ramona Vaughn. Are there any others? We thank you for your many gifts. We thank you for all those young people who are celebrating the anniversary of their baptism. We do pray that you bless their lives and their families. Make our joy complete in the knowledge of the good news of the resurrection. Console those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Jim Bolgert, Gal Davidson, Francis Hoffman, and of Harry Kirkpatrick. Hear us, O oh God. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need. In the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Merciful God, as wheat scattered upon the hill were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. The Lord be with you.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O God, the host at every meal, at this table you spread out a feast for all peoples, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Send us from this banquet to invite others into these good things, to let justice roll down like waters, and to care for the least of our sisters and brothers. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and our Savior. There you go. I invite you. My button would not uh, work. To read your messenger, and please uh, note, uh, we're not trying anything new. Number H is trunk or treat. And uh, um, so uh, I notice that there will be a sign-up for that. Hannah might be saying something about that. Go ahead, Mick. Um, uh, the handbooks for the uh, women of the ELCA are now done. <laughs> so if you are in a circle, I have put them in your box. If you would like to join a circle, you can see me or at our bulletin board, there are more books and you can look at it and decide which you would like to join. Thank you. Boy, a publication like that must have taken hours. Yes, Dan, thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I have a couple of things. The first is that um, Trunk or Treat is on October 26th. That'll be out here in our parking lot from 4.30 to 6.30. If you're interested in um, having a trunk or if you're interested in knowing what that means, um, come and find me or contact me. Um, next week, there will be a poster out here on an easel that you can sign up for. Or if you want to just let me know, I can write it down. So the other thing is if you look in your bulletins, um, you're going to find this piece of paper. It's called Taking Faith Home. This is a resource from Vibrant Faith Ministries, um, which is really great. You should go home and look that up. It's wonderful. Um, these will be in your bulletins every week now. Um, they follow the lectionary readings. And you can see on here it starts with today's gospel and goes through next Sunday's. And it's a reading for every day. Um, and then it has a lot of discussion points and things that you can do at home as a family. And this is for adults, children, everybody. So um, we're going to use these for the rest of the the year here, and we'd like to hear your thoughts about them. So if you have a particularly pressing comment about them, good or bad, just contact me and let me know. Thanks. Thank you. By the way, next week, um, there's going to be a film crew here. I'm saying this for two reasons. You might want to make us look good on film, so show up. And uh, in particular, they're interested in filming Terry Michael uh, for a devotional uh, and Terry's uh, relationship with his father and 
Uh, what? How how that relationship affected Terry in, in his life? So um, anyway, come if for no other reason. I hope you come for other reasons, but for no other reason than to make Messiah look good. Receive this benediction: the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace. Be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we go in peace, Christ is with you.